Following the Allies' successful breakout from Normandy and the liberation of France in the summer of 1944, a number of French Atlantic ports remained in German hands, cut off and under siege. These included ports with U-boat bases, and the Allies began a long and painful process of trying to capture these heavily defended fortresses. Some remained in German hands until May 1945. But there was another bypass German stronghold that would continue to cause trouble for the Allies until the end of the war, the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands lie off the coast of Normandy. British possession since the 11th century, they are the only part of Great Britain captured by the Germans in World War II, and have been occupied since summer 1940, consisting of the main islands of Jersey, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark, the occupation of British territory had been a propaganda dream for the Germans, and Hitler had decreed that they must be held. In fact, one entire German infantry division, sorely needed in the Battle of Normandy, garrisoned the Channel Islands, which were massively fortified with coastal gun emplacements and beach defences. The Allies wisely chose not to attempt to recapture the islands. Instead, they were bypassed and isolated, left to wither on the vine. By late 1944, the German garrison was suffering severe shortages of fuel, food and other supplies, and the civilian population faced actual starvation. This situation caused the Germans to look to any means to supplement their meagre supply difficulties, including military action. In December 1944, four German paratroopers and a naval cadet managed to escape from a US POW camp at the port of Granville in Normandy. These enterprising men stole a small US landing craft and headed for the nearest friendly German territory, which happened to be the Channel Island of Jersey. The prisoners were debriefed and they revealed interesting information concerning the Granville area. They reported that several ships were in the harbour offloading coal, a fuel in desperately short supply in the Channel Islands. Much other important war material was in the port, part of the massive Allied supply effort keeping its armies going in northwest Europe. In the meantime, a new German commander in the Channel Islands was appointed. He was a tough, no-nonsense sailor called Vice Admiral Friedrich Hufmeier. Fortress commander since the 26th of February 1945, Hufmeier had previously commanded the battleship Scharnhorst. He was a strong supporter of Nazism and considered his job in the Channel Islands was to resist any attempt by the Allies to recapture them and also to take offensive action whenever he could to support German forces fighting in Europe. He was of the opinion that a raid on Granville from Jersey would not only gain much-needed supplies for his command, but also raise morale among the trap garrison. The Germans knew that coal ships and other supply ships were arriving regularly from the UK and America, and unloading in the port of Granville, so a naval raid on Granville seemed the obvious choice. The plan was effectively a smash-and-grab operation that the Allies would not expect so late in the war. Hufmeier selected a man to lead the raid, Lieutenant Commander Karl Friedrich Moore, and a date was set, the night of the 8th to 9th of March 1945. Germany still possessed some naval assets in the Channel Islands, and these vessels were made ready for action. The force consisted of four M-class minesweepers. These were fairly large vessels at around 600 tons each, well armed with a main gun and a mix of 37 and 20 mm flak pieces. There were also three Marina Fahrpram, or naval ferry barges, a type of German landing craft armed with 88 mm guns. Three fast motor launchers joined the flotilla, plus two Raumbotter, small minesweepers armed with a single 37mm and two 20mm cannons. Finally, a Navy seagoing tug was added, so that any Allied ships captured as prizes could be hauled back to Jersey. 
The German ships were picked up on U.S. Army radar as soon as they left St. Helier in Jersey. The U.S. 156th Infantry Regiment was placed on standby at Burnville, and the German movement reported to the U.S. commander at Granville. However, little else was done, the Americans clearly not believing that the Germans would undertake a raid. A U.S. Navy subchaser, PC-564, was ordered to intercept the German convoy just before midnight on the 8th of March. The small American ship was blasted by German shell fire, being hit by 88mm shells and cannon fire and driven ashore, with 10 crewmen killed, many wounded and 9 actually captured by the Germans. An hour later, the Germans approached the port of Granville. The three artillery barges took position between Ile Chanze and Saint Malo to block Allied patrols from that area, while two minesweepers lay between Jersey and the Cotentin Peninsula to provide protection on the other flank. The remaining German vessels sailed straight into the harbour, flashing recognition signals that fooled the harbour authorities. Seventy well-equipped Germans came quickly ashore at the main quay. One German minesweeper ran aground and was later blown up by her crew. The 70 Germans ran amuck in the harbour, demolishing nine of the 18 new cranes installed by the Americans for unloading ships. In the meantime, the small German launchers landed another assault party on the beach in front of two hotels, the Hotel de Bain and Hotel Normandy. U.S. infantry and military police were by now battling the German raiders, but were outgunned by the heavy fire from covering German minesweepers and patrol boats. However, one small U.S. unit managed to defend a radar station, killing the German officer leading the attack. Moving fast, and with the tide now ebbing, the Germans moved quickly to try and haul off merchant ships as prizes. But they only managed to tow away the 1,200-ton Exwood, which was loaded with 122 tons of coal. However, charges laid by the main German assault damaged three British and one Norwegian merchant ship. And they also liberated 55 German POWs, being used for labour on the docks by the Allies. The diversionary raid on the two hotels caused havoc. Several French civilians were shot down during intense German gunfire, plus two U.S. Marine Corps officers who were killed. Nine other Americans were taken prisoner. The former Royal Navy port commander in Granville, Lieutenant Frederick Lightoller, and five Royal Navy ratings also died during the raid. Lightoller was the son of Charles Lightoller, senior surviving officer, the sinking of the Titanic in 1912. At 3 a.m. the Germans withdrew, taking with them the Collier, Exwood and their prisoners. As they steamed back to Jersey, German batteries on Jersey engaged the lighthouse and American signal station at Grand Isle de champs German losses in the raid were three killed, 15 wounded and one man taken prisoner. Moore and his flotilla arrived back in Jersey to a hero's welcome. It was quite a feat, considering how formidable were the Allied naval and air assets in the region. Moore was awarded the Knight's Cross for his leadership of the raid, while another Knight's Cross went to Lieutenant Otto Kahl, who had commanded one of the artillery barges during the raid. Incredibly, the Granville raid spurred Admiral Hufmeyer to order another raid set for the night of the 5th of April 1945. This time the target was not merchant ships and port facilities, but Allied radar installations at Cap de la Hague. Eighteen German marines launched from rubber boats fitted with outboard motors, but the mission failed and the team was captured. Not deterred by this setback, Hufmeyer ordered another raid on Normandy for the 7th of May 1945, the day before Germany's final surrender. But Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, the Navy's commander-in-chief, a new president of Germany since Hitler's death, ordered Hufmeyer to cease all offensive operations. The British liberated Jersey two days later on the 9th of May, and Admiral Hufmeyer and his staff were formally surrendered the entire garrison becoming POWs. A tumultuous welcome awaits the liberators of the islands. Incidentally, the oldest British possession and the only British territory to be occupied by the Germans during the war. The German guard marches out from the ancient castle. 
the German commander is marched away and all equipment is handed in. The proclamation of liberty is read and the Union Jack hoisted. With their rightful flag flying once again above them, the islanders give themselves over to Victory Day celebrations. Today, the Channel Islands remained littered with old German bunkers and gun batteries, a testament to how important these British islands were to the Nazis. The Granville raid demonstrated that right up to the final surrender, German forces remained professional and very dangerous opponents. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my other YouTube channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.